Hey guys, Brian with Buffalo Beer Reviews. It is way early in the morning and uh, I just got the brew kettle started for uh, my brew day, honestly. I don't know why the hell else I would start a brew kettle. Uh, so I'm going to be brewing that uh, Citra Mosaic sort of oat cream IPA that I had made a little bit ago. <clears throat> I thought it came out really well. Um, I'm just going to probably, I'm going to try to incorporate some better brewing techniques, some better whirlpooling uh, information and techniques into this batch to see if I can't get um, as enjoyable uh, as a product, uh, product as I did last time. <clears throat> Let me pull up the recipe here real quick. It's called, <clears throat> affectionately called Sip Moat IPA. Uh, this is a 152 degree uh, mash for an hour. Um, I didn't have nine pounds of two row, so I used nine pounds of Maris Otter. Uh, flaked oats, three pounds, white wheat malt, uh, 1.96 ounces, caro foam, 20 ounces. Um, I'm using the Y Yeast 1318, the London Ale 3. This time around, it just happens to be where I was at. This calls for citra half ounce at uh, 30 minutes for a little bittering charge. Citra one and a half at 10 minutes, uh, as well as a pound of the lactose at 10 minutes. <clears throat> and that calls for about a 170 degree whirlpool for a half hour with two ounces of Yukonat, uh, two ounces of Idaho seven. Now I'm wondering there what I should do. Should I, should I add, um, I felt as though it was a little on the underwhelming side last time I had it, or brewed it. So I'm wondering if I should either add, you know, an ounce of citra to the whirlpool as well. Um, two ounces of citra, I have it. Or I have um, Falconer's Flight here. I have three ounces of Falconer's Flight that I haven't really found a, a use for. So I'm thinking <clears throat> of adding one of those two. Really, uh, the goal of my uh, making the video today is really to kind of um, time lapse through the whole brewing process. Really, because I want to, I want to uh, focus on getting the beer into the fermenter, which is really uh, the catalyst behind me wanting to brew today. So let me click this open. You can kind of see I'm I'm getting ready. You know, I've got my uh, my scale. I've got my water treatments already. Uh, my hops, uh, the yeast, some other stuff. I got it all ready to go. Just kind of trying to wake up a little bit. It's like 6.30 in the morning. I've got stuff to do early in the afternoon. So <clears throat> we're about halfway through the mash. I'm a little bit more bright eyed and uh, bushy tailed, even though I probably don't look like it. I feel like it. <clears throat> We're doing well. Uh, I have to kind of offset the little temperatures on this uh, brew kettle just because it's a little bit chillier in the uh, basement during the winter time. Uh, we're mashing at 152. We're at like 151.8 or something right in the middle of that mash. I did my water treatment and I did my pH uh, measurement and I was shooting for like 5.46, whatever the, uh, the little water calc uh, calculator told me and I hit just about 1.46, 1.47. So I'm happy about that. Um, you can see also my uh, fermenter, sorry for flipping it around a bunch of times. Um, I've already got the uh, star sand in there and I am, that's just the cap. I figured I might just use that as a collection jar. Um, you can just take a look all around. There aren't any leaks. Um, and I know that's a big thing that people have been kind of putting up for review and this, that, the other thing. I have uh, filled this up the day that I got it. I pressure tested it the day that I got it. I wanted to just double check to make sure that wasn't a fluke. I put it uh, with some volume of water in there, opened up the butterfly valves and got everything in contact with the star sand. And I haven't had 
even a little bit of a drop of a leak. So I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm confident that it's gonna work. Um, probably after I'm ramping up my temp for uh, the boil, I'll start measuring out my uh, hops and all that other good stuff. But you don't really need to see that. I, I really just wanted to show you guys the uh, transferring into the uh, the firmzilla and pitching the yeast. Um, that'll be really cool. What's going on, everybody? Uh, we are coming up on our 10-minute uh, hop edition. Uh, everything's been going really smoothly. There's a couple of different things that I've been able to kind of pull from past experiences. Like, uh, because I'm doing such a large edition of Whirlpool hops, my boil hops I put into the hop socks, these uh, muslin bags, so that... I can readily take them out of the hop spider. I put the uh, put my boil hops in there. Uh, this is my 10 minute addition going in right now. Uh, when boil is over, I can just take those out with the ladle and then just add my whirlpool hops into there. It will help me, I believe, conserve a little bit of water volume as well as just overall speed things along. Um, here's my lactose additions. Boom, boom, boom. This is, remember, this is the oat cream IPA. I don't necessarily know if I would 100% agree with, uh, the cream part of it. I don't know if that's just because it has the lactose in it. But, um, I'm going to brew it a second time and see how I like this batch couple of extra additions of some uh, aroma hops to the uh, Whirlpool. Uh, maybe that will make it a little bit more enjoyable uh, product. I'm going to stir this around and then once this is complete and the Whirlpool um, steeping process is complete, I'll pick back up and do the transfer into the Firmzilla. Alright, I am chilled to pitching temp. I got the uh, for now, I've got the boil kettle kind of hanging a little over my uh, stool here. I've got the fermenter kind of on an angle, and I'm just supporting it. Um, I have to figure out a better a better solution to this. I don't know if it's going to be the, in the form of a pump or um, elevating my stand maybe three, four inches. Um, this thing I thought was going to do the work. It's some sort of like chimney liner, but uh, it was not... Um, stable enough to kind of have five gallons on top of that. So, I mean, for now, um, I'll figure it out. Okay, all is said and done. Um, I'm transferred into the fermenter. I just have to kind of dip the cap in my star sand and uh, pitch the yeast and get it rolling. I'm kind of excited to see being able to see this uh, the activity of the yeast and the and the beer, being able to use the uh, the collection jar for the the yeast uh, tube and all that other good stuff and and for dry hopping and all that other good stuff. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm I am literally just going to pitch the yeast and put the top on in the airlock. Uh, some things, yeah. So, to make life easy, uh, even if I can't position the, uh, the conical right underneath the spout, even if I am able to um, elevate the whole thing, maybe about four inches, I'll be able to use uh, some tubing to get from there diagonally into the conical um, without having to take it off the stand and kind of angle it with the, with the lid, stuff like that. I can already tell that this wide mouth sort of top is going to, uh, to be very beneficial when it's, when it comes to transferring, uh, beer, war or beer into the top of it. Um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's it for me guys. Uh, I'm going to get this thing all shored up and finish up my brew day and start cleaning. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed a little look into 
um, my first real experience um, with the Firmzilla. So uh, maybe when this thing is wrapping up uh, fermentation, I'll kind of shoot out another little video, okay? See you. Cheers.